The Springbok 22 caliber is the most recent attempt by manufacturer Caliber Gun CZ to cross the semi-automatic threshold. Notable manufacturers have ventured into this territory before only to fail and never return. Does the Springbok have what it takes to be a long-standing platform and earn the title as a reliable semi-automatic PCP rifle? Or will it become another revolution that lacks the grassroots support it needs to be successful? Stick with me until the end of this video. I'll answer that question and I'll tell you why I came to that conclusion. Thank you for joining us again. Today we are going to be looking at a new offering from the Czech Republic. As I mentioned before, this is the Caliber Gun Springbok Semi-Automatic PCP Rifle. This is available currently in the 22 caliber, so that's the one that we're going to be looking at today. And I know all of you at home did the same thing when I said semi-auto. You all went, oh no, here comes another unreliable, sensationalized, overpriced gun. And in the past, that has been the case with many pre-charged pneumatics. I'm here today to tell you why I believe the caliber gun will not fall into this category. And I'm gonna to point to three main reasons why I think this will be a long-standing PCP platform. Reason number one, build quality. Caliber guns are over-engineered. They've been around for a lot of years, and if you've ever seen one or known someone that has one, you know that they have a reputation for high build quality and over-engineering their rifles. This rifle is assembled with the end user in mind, and it is built to last. They ensure quality and they ensure long serviceability of the rifles. I personally have ran caliber guns in competitions and I've never had a major failure or anything problematic that I could point to that prevented me from using the platform. So very high build quality, should have a long shelf life, should ensure that you're happy with it for many years. The second reason is the simplicity of the design. When you think about it at the end of the day, this is a pre-charge, this is all using pressurized air to semi-automatically shoot a lead projectile as quickly as you can pull the trigger. It is incredibly complicated what it's doing, but it's actually very simple in its overall design. The gun is serviceable by the end user. You do have a one year warranty that comes with the gun. So during that year, no need to work on it. But down the road, if you need to make a quick adjustment or you have an O-ring that needs to be replaced and you do tear into it, you'll find that it's not very intimidating at all. And it is very user friendly to service this rifle. The third and final reason that I believe the caliber gun will be here to stay is you, the end user. Your desire to have new technology, to have better performance, to have more power is a constant strive. Luckily, there are manufacturers like caliber gun that are willing to test the waters and go where others have failed and produce cutting edge technology just like this. So as long as there is a constant strive from the market and a willingness to try new things, I think we're gonna have a long platform ahead of us with Caliber Gun here. This is also potentially the first of a long line of semi-automatics from Caliber Gun. So there is long-term serviceability into the future. I think parts will always be available. I think this will be a platform that'll be around for a while. So there you have it, why I think the Caliber Gun is a solid platform and it is here to stay. Now that I've talked about the Caliber Gun Springbok enough, let's go ahead and do our normal head to toe inspection of the rifle, show you what you physically get with the rifle, and we'll start all that with an unboxing. Okay, we're gonna do a quick unboxing for you of the Springbok and show you exactly what you could expect to get when you open up the box. Inside of the box, there are three things initially. You got your owner's manual, which is a good resource to always keep. It has a lot of the stuff that I cover in this video written down for you. You have this piece of bubble wrap, which is actually, the shroud of the rifle. It just threads directly onto the end of the barrel. And the third thing we see here is this black drawstring bag. I'm just gonna open that up real quick for you. And inside there are three things. You have a reseal kit. That is a replacement of every O-ring in the gun for you. You have two magazines. And then you also have a quick connect fill probe here. Under here, we have the caliber gun spring box, just as it would come out of the box. Once the shroud is on the gun, so once you do that, you have your caliber gun Springbok fully assembled. All you need now is put air in it and you'll be ready to rock and roll. So it's all set up and ready to go on a bench now. What I'm gonna do is sweep from the back to the front and we're gonna touch about every feature, show you what you get when you buy one of these Springbok 22s. So the Springbok is 34 inches from the back to the very front here of the shroud in overall length. So it's a very compact model. Um, and without a scope, it weighs nine pounds. So it's not the lightest gun in the world, but it is like we we're talking about build quality. There's a lot of quality parts here. So it is a little bit heavier, but on a gun like this, it's got a great bench presence. So hopefully those stats aren't too intimidating. Um, 34 inches in overall length, you have a 23 inch um, CZ non-choked barrel. So CZ manufactured barrel, 23 inches in overall length that's producing a lot of power and a lot of good accuracy like we'll see at 20 and 50. 
The gun is fully ambidextrous, um, so it is not set up for a left-handed or right-handed shooter specifically. And how easily you can change the bolt handle side, it's a truly left-handed or right-handed gun, whatever your setup is. In the very back, you have a rubber butt pad. This is adjustable up and down, so it gives you a little bit of a way of customizing the gun to fit your needs. In front of that, immediately, you see right here, this is a little circular piece, it almost looks like a turkey timer sticking out the back. This is where your hammer spring is. You can make velocity adjustments by backing the tension out to decrease, turning the screw in to increase the amount of pressure on the spring. So that is a quick velocity adjuster right there. And then that piece that sticks out the back tells you that the gun is cocked. This is a semi-automatic gun, so most of the time it is cocked. You can put the safety and you can decock it. Most of the time when you're shooting the semi-autos, they stay pretty much cocked all the time. So that's your cocking indicator right here. And then actually on other side of the gun in the back, this piece right here is the physical hammer. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this back and let it go forward. We can see both this one is set back and now my little turkey timer is in, popping out. If I wanna decock it, I don't wanna cock all the way back. I wanna come right here and then I just wanna pull the trigger and that falls forward, letting us know it's decocked my turkey timer is no longer sticking out of the back. Good resource for a semi-automatic gun is a cocking indicator. The Caliber Gun Springbok has two of them right there. Moving forward on the gun, you can see it uses a uh, wood style stock. So this is a one piece stock. It's very comfortable on a bench. You have a nice little piece here that can ride on a back bag, um, be used to give you some elevation adjustment. So it's a very comfortable gun when it's on the bench and the wood, both the wood one piece stock as well as the wood cheek piece help make it as comfortable as possible. This right here is where your magazine goes. In 22 caliber, it's a 13 shot magazine. It loads and unloads right here. Moving forward, I'm gonna flip the rifle again. This gauge right here is going to be the regulator pressure. So this is the first caliber gun that has an externally adjustable regulator. Caliber gun does listen to the market. Many people do appreciate this feature on a gun. So they have incorporated this gauge that tells you the pressure. And then right next to it, you need an eight millimeter Allen wrench to adjust it. And you can see right there a negative and then a plus. So when you put your eight millimeter wrench in, turn it to the right to increase pressure, turn it to the left to decrease pressure. And if you're decreasing pressure, you wanna make sure you bleed the rifle first completely of all it's air. Going forward to that, we have, I'm gonna start on the trigger. Right here, it's fully enclosed in a metal trigger guard, which I really like. I can't stand plastic trigger guards. Oh, so <laughs> big, big win in my opinion from caliber gun. It's, it's the small things. And this one for me is plastic trigger guards just do not bode well with high-end pre-charged pneumatic rifles. So there, I said it, that's metal. I like it. Above it, it's a two-stage adjustable trigger. So even though it uses a linkage system, the trigger can be adjusted both for travel as well as pressure that it breaks at. So that's another feature they added in response to market feedback and just proof that they are listening to the end users. So right above the trigger, you have your safety. This little red button right here above the trigger is your safety. You can see they have a nice um, key for you here. So when it's pushed in, it's in fire. When it's popped back out the other way, it's in safe. So right now it's in safe, but that is nice. Right next to the trigger comes in and out on both sides to let you know which way is safe and which way is fire. Above that, you have your charging handle, like we showed you how to decock it. This can be switched very, very simply, pretty much as simply as spreading it out this way and threading it back in on this side, but it's a non-oscillating bolt probe. So once I cock it and let it fall, every time the gun shoots, the piece comes in and out. It's semi-auto, so the probe comes in and out, but this piece itself doesn't move. It stays fixed, which is really small, but it really, I don't know how to describe it. Less moving parts is better on a semi-auto. So when you have less pieces moving back and forth like that, it just feels more sturdy, it feels higher quality, and you really do feel it in the spring box. Um, so non-oscillating bolt handle, and then to cock it, you push in like that. So it's kind of a sleek design, it's not very big at all. It can be swapped to either side, um, but the charging handle is really unique on the spring box. So once that charging handle is forward, I'll just go ahead and do it real quick so you can see we'll dry fire it. You'll notice that as it fires, if you look back here, the bolt will come in and out, but this does not move. So it's really cool how it works. This stays forward, fully engaged, doesn't slide back and forth and create some unnecessary vibration or inertia. It stays forward and the bolt probe is all that comes in and out. Right in front of that area charging, you have a total of four weaver style accessory rails. Granted, one of them is the scope rail. So on top you have this weaver scope, you have two on the sides, and then you have one underneath that the AccuTac bipod is connected to. Flipping the gun over one more time, we have the front gauge right here, 
moving forward. This is gonna tell you how much pressure is in your carbon fiber bottle. So this one reads pressure in the bottle. This one reads regulator pressure. You never want this one to drop below this one. I personally don't even like them to get really close together. So like you can see here, I'm at about 120 bar on my reg. Usually when I hit 150, I refill. You don't have to, but the closer they come to equalizing, the more likely you are to have a, a non-cycled cycled shot or a hiccup of some sort. So make sure bottle pressure stays well above regulator pressure. And speaking of bottle pressure, that has a carbon fiber bottle. Along with that, it also has a valve. You can see I'm rotating it. This gun does have a bottle valve on it, so the bottle can be removed. You can put different bottles on. Caliber gun is listening to the market feedback, and we can see that with three, those three notable changes on this gun, adjustable trigger, adjustable regulator, carbon fiber bottle. They're making changes, and they're all for the better, in my opinion. Right above the carbon fiber bottle, um, you have your shroud, like we showed you in the unboxing. So once the shroud has been removed, you see this kind of strange spring-looking device on your um, barrel. What that is, is that is actually the blowback system that resets and, and allows it to be semi-auto. So some of the air that comes out of the barrel gets diverted back into the shroud, and it pushes this, which cocks your gun. So that is how the semi-auto blowback system works on the Springbok and that is about as complicated as that piece is. You have a half inch UNF by 20 here. That is for moderators or any aftermarket accessories you may want to use on the end of the rifle. So I do believe we have now covered the gun from the back all the way to the front. I've highlighted all the features that are on this gun um, and we've really put it under the microscope for you. Hopefully you've got a better idea of what is involved with the caliber gun Springbok. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take it to the 20 yard range and we're gonna actually shoot the gun. And let's be honest, that's what most of you are here for anyways. So we're gonna figure out shot count. We're gonna figure out power. We're gonna do accuracy at 20, accuracy at 50. I'll meet you back here and we'll finish this one up. Caliber gun Springbok back here at the 20 yard range. This is the part of the video where we're gonna show you how much power we're producing. We're gonna fill it up full and show you how many shots we get per fill. And then we're also gonna look at the 20 yard accuracy and give us an indicator of what indoors at 20 yards it can do. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do back here at 20 yards, and it's what I'm gonna do first actually, is introduce everyone to this brand new magazine from Caliber Gun. This is completely enclosed as you can see, all metal design, and it has this door that hinges up like that. So it's on a pivot point and it, it exposes the internal drum there. So this one is all spring tension. So you just go ahead and crank that drum around. You put your first pellet in like that and now I can completely let go. That drum is gonna stay secure and then all I'm gonna do is come around and fill it up. Okay, 13 pellets later, you have a full mag. So all you wanna do now is close the lid and there's a nice little snap to let you know is it closed. Now it's all ready to rock and roll. It just goes in the side of the gun here. Make sure your bolt's back. Okay, so now that we have the 13 shot magazine loaded, what we'll go ahead and do first is our five shot group for accuracy. I'm gonna try and hit the center of the bowl. We'll probably start with five and then finish the magazine since it is a semi-auto, um, but let's start with five. Okay, so that's five coming out of the magazine, semi-auto, nice and tight group at 20 yards there. Um, so let's go ahead and finish the magazine off. I'll do eight more shots right into that same hole, hopefully. That is the end of the magazine there. We got 13 rounds right in the middle there. That's great for 20 yards indoors. It's kind of what I expected, um, but the gun really shoots well quickly. You don't have to really take your time and focus on the trigger pull. You can kind of just get it in the vicinity and start rolling and the gun will keep up. So great accuracy at 20 yards. What we're going to do next is let's top it off. This gun can handle 300 bar on the fill pressure. So we're going to put 300 bar in it and we're going to calculate how many shots we get with these monster redesigns. So off of a 300 bar fill, we were able to get a total of 180 shots. Our average speed was 786 with these 25 grain monsters. So that puts us right at 35 foot pounds of energy. So incredible shot count for this bottle fill gun. 180 shots is nothing to slouch at at just shy of 40 foot pounds. Standard deviation of seven means the regulator's working well, and that's everything you could hope for in this gun.
So that's going to complete the 20 yard segment of the Caliber Gun Springbok Tour. The next stop on our tour is going to be out at 50 yards. We're going to really stretch it out, try and get some good groups for you, show you what the gun is capable of. Then I'll meet you back in the showroom and we'll finish this up. We have the Caliber Gun Springbok outside at our testing range. It's 50 yards. This is the furthest distance that we're gonna test the Springbok at. We're gonna be loading the Monster Redesign JSBs, and we're gonna be shooting them out of the magazine. So first thing we're gonna do is put a five shot group together for you. All right. That's five out of the magazine. Let's get down there and take a closer look at it. They're all inside the nine ring there. And as you can see, I was really kind of rattling them off quicker than you were able to with a single load gun. So that's what makes this gun fun. This is minute of pigeon, any pest you could have that's taking care of the problem all day long. So using the gun as a pest gun or just an all around fun gun, you know it out to 50 yards, you're gonna have really hole on hole accuracy. So I was really happy with this. The gun is a semi-automatic. So why don't we put a fresh target up? We'll do 13. Not as fast as I can, but as fast as I can accurately can and see what kind of group we'll get. Twelve or thirteen shots are in the dead center of that bullseye. So let's go take a closer look. So that was quickly yet accurately. And as you can see, we didn't lose much accuracy at all. They're all breaking the line of the nine ring. That was probably three or four seconds, give or take a little bit, but 50 yard accuracy for rapid trigger pulls without losing any accuracy. That's phenomenal. It really shows you and gives you an idea of what the Springbok is capable of. And just as an all around gun, I can't think of a scenario where you couldn't use it and be happy. All right, let's get this back into the showroom. I'll meet you over there and we'll finish this video up. Okay, so there is the review of the Caliber Gun Springbok 22 Caliber. I hope that you enjoyed the review. I hope that you gained some valuable information from the review. I hope that maybe it just changed your view of PCP semi-autos. Maybe you'll go, hmm, that build quality is pretty high. Or maybe the ease of service will get me over the finish line and tell me to finally buy a semi-automatic PCP gun, hopefully. But if not, I understand as well. But if you do go out there and get yourself a caliber gun Springbok, I can guarantee you that you'll have a lot of fun with it. Thanks for watching everybody. I am Jared Clark. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you follow us for more videos. I hope you like it. I hope you subscribe. I hope you comment and I hope you come back for the next one. Thanks a lot. Oh, yes,